so I have it. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the TCAD 10 Minute Take. It is I, your host, Sheree L. Stewart, and with me, as always, is my intrepid co host, Don, the man, the myth, the legend, Chambers. Yes. And today we are wrapping up our year with a movie that was the first released after the pandemic, but we didn't get to it until just now. But we're going to talk about it because we got to it. <laughs> that is Tenet. Tenet. <laughs> But before we get started, make sure you click that subscribe button and you click that bell to get all the 10 minute takes as soon as they drop. And as always, Mr. Chambers will go first and go. Yes, Tenet, uh, directed by Christopher Nolan, uh, starring John David Washington, uh, Richard Pattinson. Robert. I'm sorry, Robert Pattinson. <laughs> I don't know why I'm, I'm thinking Richard. And uh, hold on. Um, uh, who was he that played the Russian guy? Um, uh, I don't know them. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, uh, 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 the, the, the main bad guy. Why, why am I? Oh, it was Kenneth Branagh. Kenneth Branagh. Jesus, I'm blanking out on that man. And he directed. Like, wow, he's really good he, because I didn't recognize him at all. He directed one of my my oh. favorite Thor movie, Kenneth Branagh. Yes. Okay. Uh, well, I had no idea. And then Elizabeth Debicki. Yes. As the girl, I guess. <laughs> the girl. <laughs> Her name is Kat. Um, right. Okay. Of course it is. I'm not even, I'm just, I'm not going to try to explain the, the plot of this because I still don't understand the plot of this movie. Okay. From what I understand, John David Washington was some kind of spy. He's considered dead to the world. And he gets sort of recruited into this program called Tenet. And it's about stopping this Russian, I guess he's like an oligarch type of character, Kenneth Branagh's character, from sending, or, or no, he's not the one, but somebody is sending back from the future pieces of some sort of machine that if he puts it together will wipe out time and civilization as they know it right now and he's working with Robert Pattinson to prevent all those pieces from coming to you. listen let me tell you let me say this it's shot wonderfully it's directed great when you sort of see these people and things running through time, but backwards. It, it's it's bizarre. It's weird. But how it's done, I think it's, it's technically probably one of the most amazing things I've seen and probably you will see because it's, I don't know if it's CGI or how they did it because it looks so, so seamless. It, like, because there's a fight scene between between uh, John David Wash, and the thing is, he doesn't even have a name. He's just known as the protagonist, protagonist which he literally calls himself. So it's between John David Washington's character and a, another uh, uh, masked character who is moving through time backwards, and the way he fights and moves, you could tell he's moving backwards. But it's so seamless in how he's fighting with John David Washington that I'm like, this can't be CGI. It has to be a stunt, man. It, it, I'm telling you, it's amazing stuff. Everybody in there who's acting is top notch. Every place looks great. All the sets, all the locations. Uh, my one complaint is, I think ever since, uh, uh, I believe it's The Dark Knight Rises, the one that had Bane in it. He's he's had this thing where the music is almost, is really overpowering the vocals, like uh, the dialogue. And certain parts, I'm like, what the hell are they saying? I don't know why Nolan is now on this thing with the sound like that. But it, it this movie is such it's it's a it's still a mind trip. But as confused as I was watching it, it still held me because I still just wanted to know. Okay, What's this next piece that might help me understand it? What's going on here? What's happening here? It Look, 
I know right now it's, it's like it's on Amazon Prime now. I, I, it's, it's, fine. it's in the red box. Yeah, it's also in the red box. So you can finally rent it and do – absolutely. I mean, it, it, again, like I said in this review, I can't even really get into the plot because I'm still trying to understand the plot. But I'm just telling you, I sat through the whole thing and for however long, and I, I was at full attention trying to understand it, and it held me all the way through. Um, absolutely. However you can rent it and watch it, do it. And you have to do it uninterrupted. You can't watch for 30 minutes, go warm something up to make something to eat, and come back. Because I'm telling you, if you lose one part of what's happening here, you're truly going to be lost. And I watched it straight through, and I'm still kind of lost. So, <laughs> where do so, we put this on our scale? <laughs> so you, on the scale, as soon as you can watch it, watch it. It's a great movie. If, if this was in theaters, absolutely opening night with a full box of popcorn and a large soda right there. If I had to do a 1 to 10, this is like an 8 eight to nine ish type of movie it's just good i mean you know it's not not a perfect movie by any means you know like i said uh, there there are probably some some plot nitpicks and 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 some technical things again like with the music um and maybe it it feels almost a bit too convoluted for its own good but it was still enjoyable to go through and to kind of get taken on this on this ride because, because it seems to me Christopher Nolan's decided, I think I'm just going to try to, to, I want to take movies and their ideas in these movies. I'm just going to go there with it. I'm just going to go. And if people can follow it and understand great, if they can't, I'm just going to make sure it's interesting enough that they're just going to enjoy the ride anyway, even if they're lost. And I dig it. I can totally dig it. Um, I'm one of those that's going to be lost, but I'm there for the ride. Yeah, I I didn't hate it. I'll say, um, if you liked Inception, yes, then this is a perfect companion movie to Inception. Big time. It felt like it could literally be a sequel, a spiritual sequel, without being a sequel right. to Inception. It's the exact same kind of movie, only instead of dealing with dreams and and the nature of like the dream reality, you're dealing with time and the way that time works, it, or it essentially that we don't really understand how time works. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that that is true. Like we don't fully grasp how time works. We perceive time linearly, but it doesn't necessarily mean that that's the way that time works. Um, it's de- it deals with time travel in a very novel way that we have not seen before, um, which it's visually arresting. And I understand why he was pushing so hard to have it open in theaters yeah. because seeing it on a big screen is an intense experience. Um, I got it from the red box. Um, and watched it on the projector and then I could definitely see why he would rather that experience than just having it on the TV or on your computer or on your phone or on your tablet because you don't get the full magnitude of some of the, the really cool stuff that they were able to accomplish. It was almost like the Matrix in a sense where you're seeing visually uh, camera tricks and editing tricks and CGI stuff that you've never seen before put together in a way that you've never seen before. And it's almost like almost as revolutionary, I would say, as bullet time. Yeah. Is this yeah. this backwards, forward, simultaneous <sighs> time where some people are moving forward and some people are moving backwards in the same scene. And I think that that deserves a lot of credit. I do agree with you about some of the scenes with the Christopher Nolan loud ass music, yeah. overwhelming scenes for no reason. And then there's dialogue in those scenes, but I think it's dialogue that doesn't matter if you hear it or not. It's like, it's more about how you feel. And then music is part of that. Um, he definitely has started doing that more as kind of his little signature mm-hmm. thing to do where you're, I think it's like a, it's like a magic trick where he's forcing you to focus on something. So you're not seeing something else. It's like a movie sleight of hand. Um, The plot is dumb 
Don't worry about it. There's even a scene where he goes to, you know, a scientist character and she's like, don't worry about it. (laughs) She does literally say that, yeah. She literally says, don't think too hard about it. And that information, that set of instructions is for you, (laughs) the audience. Don't think too hard about it, you know, because if you start thinking too hard about it, it kind of falls apart. Um, but it's so interesting to watch, yeah. and and the characters are like the the acting is delightful. Um, it's so good and spot on. It's just the plot is super dumb. Um, basically, since we've already kind of given some spoilers, the people in the future have fucked up the planet so much that there's no going forward. They have to figure out a way to go back to where to where we are, and so they are they have figured out a way to reverse the flow of time, but only for specific objects right now. Mm -hmm. And so they have to figure out a way to reverse the flow of time for everything, but they don't know what would happen as a consequence of that. Would it destroy everything? Would it destroy the past? Would there be some kind of weird grandfather paradox where, you know, their future has already happened. So they can't destroy the, like, like them destroying the past and all of us wouldn't destroy their own future. Like, because it's already like the Marvel has already said, like, you can't then go back and, and have your past be your new future. And so don't think about it that hard. (laughs) In other words, you've already confused me again. (laughs) Like you just like, Essentially, you have, but the my biggest gripe with that is they they had this whole thing that they wanted to do and what the reasons are, but we never get any of that. Right. Um, That's true. We only have the present and the people in the present, and they go back short distances into the past and do whatever it is they do in the past, but we don't get any of those people from the future, and the like the. Like, who is doing this? Is it the U.S. government? Is it the world government? They all come together? Is it, like, one small group of survivors Mm -hmm. huddled in a bunker and they're, like, trying to figure out how to go back? Like, we don't get any of that. We just are in the present. For a movie about time travel, it's remarkably stuck in the present. Um, But it's that's fine. I mean... As long as you don't think too hard about it, which is so weird. It's like this global implications, this huge movie, and it all comes down to three people. It's remarkably intimate for a movie with global yeah. ramifications. It's like you got this guy, that guy, that guy, and that lady. That's it. And they are responsible for the fate of the world, past, present, and future. And you're just like, yeah, okay. <laughs> I guess. Um, I don't know if I would have spent full price. If I had, I would have been like, ugh, for reals. I, I definitely would have matinated it. Like, matinee. Mm. Um, I'm glad it was in the red box. Um, even during this pandemic, COVID pandemic, I have not been super interested in going to the red box and getting other people's germs DVDs. It was worth a red box venture. Um... It, for sure it was it was in if you can stream it on amazon it's worth streaming even easier. i would have seen it would have been worth a matinee ticket is where i put it on our scale um but just know the action's great the acting's great the car chases are great the gunfights are great but the plot is super dumb don't think that hard about it because <laughs> trust me if you're like me you won't understand it anyway it doesn't matter and it doesn't matter and it really kind of doesn't matter it literally doesn't you know. matter. So, knowing that, why don't you subscribe, hit the bell, follow us, or if you go back before doing all that, go to tcatnetwork.com <laughs> and you will actually see the links to all of our episodes before you've seen them there. It's 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 it's, it's we it's Chris Nolian right there. It's it, yeah, Tenet. it's Tenet right there. <laughs> tcatnetwork.com links to all of our 10 minute takes as well as our podcast episodes as well as episodes to good morning antioch and the reading and you can also go forward in time by jumping to youtube and just follow us here where you'll see more of our uh, 10 minute takes and some of the movies we're watching and with this being thank you the end of 2020 2020 20, 20, sorry 2021 we are looking forward 
to not only more good movies because there's a lots of good stuff coming out but hopefully theaters opening up sooner uh, than expected so we can get back to being in the theater and watching them I greatly miss that and I am very much looking forward I miss the theater experience so much yes, so looking forward to getting back to a theater and make no mistake it is coming back I'm just hoping it's just going to be faster than what we're expecting I'm going to get one of those personal bubble suits. <laughs> Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. Exactly. So we will see you uh, next time. Uh, hopefully everybody has a great new year. And let's make sure 2021 is much better than 2020. Couldn't possibly get any worse. Did I just jinx us? Yeah. Hopefully jinx. not. Go back in time. <laughs> yes, let's just walk back in time. Let's tenant this whole thing. <laughs>